So how do you view the development of South-South cooperation over the past decade? And can you share with us some of the best practices? South-South cooperation has been uh, on the rise. We have seen increasing trends of cooperation, uh, especially, uh, you know, during the time of crisis, especially during the time of, you know, trying to address those extremely complex development issues. And um, according to the, the latest uh, report of the UN Secretary General on South-South cooperation, we have also seen um, you know, requests from the UN member states uh, to the United Nations system to, inc you know, with an increasing trend, if you will. A number of the issues uh, that uh, development issues that the Global South is also grappling with require South-South cooperation because they don't know any geographic boundaries like climate change, like water management, like uh, sometimes also uh, issues related to peace and development. And another example also through a program of collaboration that we have with the government of China, the Global South-South Development Center project, we have been able also to work, for example, on critical issues such as the China-Africa rice value chain uh, and connected research institutions. We connect small smallholder farmers, but also worked with the private sector from China and Africa. These initiatives have been extremely impactful uh, because they were addressing, uh, you know, key uh, development issues. And it was at the core of those national development needs. What are the challenges that remain in place for South-South cooperation? Well, I mean, the challenges are uh, uh, vary, if you will, but they, there is a quite range of, uh, of challenges. We all know that the countries of the South or the Global South is still grappling from the implication of the um, uh, socioeconomic implication, if you will, of the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic, which has put pressure on the countries and uh, kind of deviated the attention of the countries from, uh, from other sectors that are also as important. There are still a multiplicity of interconnected issues ranging from, you know, as I said, food security issues, climate issues, uh, economic issues. I mean, to date, as, as we speak, we also, there is a projection that by 20, uh, by the end of this decade, there will still be five, uh, five, seven, 575 million people who will be living in extreme poverty. So that gives you a sense, if you will, uh, of the scale. And we talk also, when we talk about challenges, we also talk about the financial challenges, the access to finance. It's only by, you know, uh, harnessing our shared experiences and leveraging the expertise that the different countries have had that we will be able to also support overcoming uh, these issues. We also, you know, see that there is a huge gap in terms of the digital transformation, in terms of uh, facilitating technology exchange. This is a huge issue that once uh, is overcome, it will facilitate the countries to have better trading uh, facilities, to have better education, better technology, to bridge the gap of, uh, you know, where those key issues reside. 